This is Sonic, one of the most recognizable characters in gaming and is a staple of pop culture to some extent, but the series since the late 90s, early 2000s have really become more of a joke. The community was at one point toxic, with many notable players such as Christian Weston Chandler and Sammy Classic Sonic fan. And although there were games that were good and have a cult following, there were many incidents where the games don't feel up to standard and in some cases, they could be considered to be one of the worst games of all time. I played some of the recent stuff, but nothing really caught my attention. Forces, at the time for me, was a bad game, but looking back, I think I was too harsh for my first 3D Sonic game. Thinking back now, it has really been more of an average game that was too short and have questionable gameplay decisions. Mania was the first 2D Sonic game for me and I have an issue with it. The game has a confusing saving system, thus making me repeat a whole world over if I get a game over. Which in today's standards is kind of unfair. Maybe if I get my mental health and video games video made, then I can explain this in more detail, possibly. And with a few merchandise here and there, this was my Sonic experience. Until me and my friend went to the mall and he got me Teen Sonic Racing as a late birthday gift. And now I'll be discussing this offensive game towards talking animals. This is the myth, the legend, Squibber 5, and this is Team Sonic Racing. No offense to Chuck E. Cheese 2.0 stores. This game has an actual story mode called Team Adventure, with gameplay segments which Guilty Gear Strike can't relate to. So what happens? This Tanuki character, Dodampa, not the roller coaster at Fujiq Highland, invites the Sonic characters to the ultimate test of racing skill. Dodampa said that he wants them to help test his new technological advanced racing cars, and would like the characters to ride them on these Mario Kart 8 courses and want them to use teamwork because this is a game for kids. And want them to use teamwork because this is a kids game. And because the Sonic characters hate new people, they suspect that Dodampa speaks like a villain and several characters start to speculate on if he's a bad guy. Throughout the races, the characters would speculate and have some stupid interactions with each other and other characters would also join in. Later on, Big, no offense to kids, has a theory as to why he's not evil, that being Dodampa is working with Wisp who only work with nice people. Wisp are these creatures that help people and a gameplay feature I'll explain in the gameplay section. And Amy then thinks that he's not evil at all. Good. Vector, who should get a career as a doctor, has gotten reports from characters that aren't in the game saying that Dodampa owns an automobile company and a planet. He and his company are planning on making a ultimate energy engine, what a tongue twister, which would have been the fastest and most powerful engine out there and is using the best racers to get what he needs. He also explains that teamwork is important in the development of this engine as he thinks that this will end global warning. In a race, Dodampa was kidnapped by Eggman and this devil wannabe for kids. They take him to the final fortress because the game has to end soon. The engine is incomplete now since the races have stopped, but Eggman wants it done for his villain needs. Luckily, Sonic and company comes by and then they resume the races to help build the engine. Many races happen with the other villain characters until it was complete. After the second to last race, the engine is done and Eggman stole it, and this is the real final race. Once the race is over, the bad guys lost and the ship will crash, and Sonic and his two Muppets use teamwork to save Dodampa. Once they return, the cars were broken, but Dodampa gave the characters new cars to race in, and the game ends. Overall, the story itself wants to fit in with the core gimmick of the game, while also having Eggman do Pingus things. And I already mentioned here that the plot is for kids, with stuff like the writing and character interactions. All the characters are trying to be smartasses, stupid, or even having mysterious personality traits. And yes, I know these characters got more development in the old Sonic games, but the game from my understanding captured the basic personalities of the characters just fine, so newcomers can know the basic understanding of these fruit gummies, even if this is a spin-off with cars. For what it is, it's alright, I don't care, let's move on to the gameplay. Let's talk about the nuts and fucks of this game, and it's the gameplay. We will be only talking about the adventure mode for the most part. What makes this game stand out from the pack is how it tries to incorporate team play, aka having two other players be on your team. How it works with basic racing is simple. You and your team may have to have the most points at the end of the race. So it's like your team needs to be in the top three, or most of your team needs to be there. If you're playing on adventure mode, you're most likely to have your characters be at random spots. They could be in the top three or in the bottom five at the end of the race. So how do you race then with these ideas? It's easy, like failing your math test. You can go at the back of your teammate's car and do a slingshot move, which helps make the car faster and also helps build a meter 
and when it's full, you can do an ultimate move in which you can use to pass every car and act like a roller coaster. You could also trade items which can help you with strategy in terms of what you need to do and if you want to use it or not. Forgot to add this, but the wisps I mentioned are the items in the game. They come in varieties like the one that make you go fast, make you invisible for a certain amount of time, projectiles, and many more. Now, how do you choose who you want as teammates? Since I really only play the story mode, I couldn't really say much for the other modes, but I do know you can only race with the assigned team your character is in. For example, Team Sonic is with Tails and Knuckles, and Sonic of course. While this is fun, I do think that if the teams were randomized for the story mode, I think it would have helped add some strategy later on. But I understand they want to make it more uniform for the adventure mode. The mode itself has you go through many different activities that are connected via a basic overworld system that spans 7 chapters. You have some standard team races that are pretty explainable. Most worlds will have a Grand Prix mode in which you go through 4 tracks and you would have to have the most points in all 4 races. And also a survival mode in which you have to make it out alive in the end of the race. Some other stuff you will be doing include a challenge in which you need to get the most amount of rings in a time limit, missions where you destroy egg ponds, no offense to sex, which are the game's enemies. And another one is breaking targets and at the last world it's mostly filled with races in which you have to beat team Eggman in the races. The worst of them is the Marvel character himself Daredevil, a mode in which you have to go through these checkpoints and try to get as much points as you can in the time limit. Now for my rant. The last couple of mission types I have mentioned are high score based and it's good to have variety but sometimes things can feel unfair like the time limit in these modes, but I understand it's there for a challenge. Why I hate this is mainly due to how the game wants you to do things specifically if you want to get the most points, which was kind of annoying, but after many tries, I did it. Another thing to take note include how the world you race in makes sense in a Sonic game, but they make it so alive with objects flying over the place and the use of perspective making them feel slightly larger than before. And to end this segment, I want to talk about Mod Pods. The fuck is a mod pod you say? It's just loot boxes and you can earn car parts, staff bonuses, and other shit which you can use in the garage and customize your vehicle. I did not know this was a thing after I beat the game and just wandered around the menus until I found it and used all of my 1700 coins to get stuff which usually costs 10 of them. And another thing to take note is that these loot boxes don't use real money so you don't have to go into debt. If I did more research beforehand, I would have used this at some point in the races or something. As for things outside of the adventure mode, you have regular races, local and online modes, and some grand prixes and other stuff I didn't really dig into. But as a game, it has a lot of variety in terms of what you can do and see, which is a good thing to keep things interesting for a while. But for some just don't have the polish that other modes have, like Daredevil. Video games need the video in video games because without it, there's nothing. It looks like a Sonic game. Sometimes the loading screens can be fast or slow, such as the in-between cutscenes and gameplay. I played the Switch version since my friend got me that version. It said that it clocked around 900p resolutions in dock mode and hit 30 frames per second in both modes. But this is the Switch version so I don't care unless it's noticeable. So I'll just make my overall thoughts and call it a day. As a racing game, Team Sonic Racing does the job in many categories including variety and execution. Their story mode slash adventure mode isn't too much to write home about since the characters feel pretty stupid and it's an average Sonic story but I understand that this is a spin-off so for the most part, but I understand that this is a spin-off for the most part, it is there to give the players a go in the story. Performance isn't anything special and I'll just give it a score of 7.3 out of 10. It's good for what it's trying to be, Sega's version of Mario Kart. Chuck E. Cheese, that's me! It's a wonderful day to go out and play Hey, maybe you could come along All you need to bring is a song to sing 